Today we're out on Canton Creek, which is in the North Umpqua. It's part of the ONC lands. We've been working on a project here for three years of doing snorkel counts to give us a snapshot of where the fish are distributed within the basin. My name is Charlie Dewberry. I'm a stream ecologist. I've worked with PRC for about 25 years. The Canton Creek Project, it's a project that Pacific Rivers Council helped initiate, started a partnership to get together to look at one basin within the ONC lands. This is the third year of the project. Basically what we're doing is we're doing snorkel counts of the entire watershed as far as the anadromous fish. I think every human being that's had the experience of seeing the river from atop and putting on a face mask, you enter a new world when you put your head underwater. A stream ecologist that doesn't snorkel has no idea what that world is. So it's a great way to come out here and actually enjoy snorkeling and so on. Also learn something about fish and why exactly they matter. From my perspective as a restoration ecologist, we, we then let the fish tell us what their needs are. We know where we would expect to find fish in a healthy watershed. By looking at our snapshot and seeing where the fish are and aren't in this basin now, that keys us in to the kind of threats that they're under and that they're ad adapting to currently within the basin. Historically, when you had a lot of big trees that would either fall in or come in in these landslides and debris, it would then catch the material above it during the big storm events and form a stair step, a natural wood stair step. So it would store the sediment, it would kind of sort the sediment out so there would be places for the fish to rear, but also spawning areas. The water could move subsurface and stay cool. And then you're dissipating all the energy. And so you're maintaining the habitat because you're dissipating the energy as it falls over these steps. This larger piece of wood across that floated in last year uh, during the storm, but then notice below it, you begin to see a whole bunch of, a whole flat of sediment that's being stored. And then when we go down to the bottom, we'll see that the whole thing is held up by one old growth cedar that fell over in the stream and got wedged. And it's forming a key piece now that's collecting and holding all this sediment in for almost 100 meters. And so this is the kind of stair step I was talking about, that you get this storage of sediment, so it's low gradient, it's flat, you've got spawning areas, you've got riffles, pools, and then you've got, you dissipate your energy when it falls over the cedar log in the back and you create a large pool at the bottom. Now we see these big legacy pieces of wood and there are on federal lands that haven't been harvested the potential of getting those in, but we see on private and on some of the public lands that they were harvested, we're not getting the input of that big wood because we got to grow the tree first. From a stream perspective, there are concerns on the uplands in these sorts of areas. In our surveys, the fish are telling us where the sediments are too high, where where there isn't enough wood, the, the channel is mostly bedrock. None of the Salmonids prefer bedrock. Bedrock also heats the stream system up. There's no real way to get out of the current. You're open to predators. It's very poor habitat. I just completed diving the lower eight miles of stream in the last week, and there wasn't one wood generated step in the lower eight miles. And my expectation would be that there would be normally maybe 10 a mile. You've got different management, completely different management philosophies and regimes on every square mile of, of land within the watershed. There's no way to put together any kind of coherent watershed-based approach. If you get a big storm in a stream that's not in very good shape, everything unravels and it's really, the fish really take a hit. If it's a stream that's healthy set up, when you get these big storms, it builds the habitat, so it makes it better. These snapshots are designed to basically lay the groundwork for a whole basin restoration plan that looks at how sediment, water, and the food, the organic matter, move from the ridge tops down the slopes into the streams, 
and then out the mouth. We kind of call it the digestive metaphor. It's the digestive system of the watershed. We're allowing the fish to help tell us what the health of that digestive system is. And that digestive system builds all the habitat, provides them with all the food, and provides them with their water. Without that information, it seems impossible to design an effective restoration project that would actually improve the habitat and improve the fish within the basin.